great. So now that you know what questions you'll have to answer, the next step is where to locate the program documentation. The first step in accessing the program will be to go to the EPSB's homepage, which is at epsb.ky.gov, and click on the link that says EPSB account. When you do that, you'll get to this page. Do not log on as yourself if you have an EPSB account. Okay. You will receive an email with specific credentials that you will use in order to log on as a content reviewer. Enter the username and password that is provided to you in the email. If you log in and you receive a message that the password has expired, please do not reset the password yourself. Contact Kathy White as soon as possible. After you enter the user ID and password, this is the page that pops up. Click on the word keepers, K-E-P-R-S, which is an acronym for Kentucky Educator Preparation Review System. The arrow, you, the red arrow you see on the screen points to that. Please note, there is a timeout feature built into Keepers. If you are idle in the system for more than 25 minutes, okay, or if you stay on the same page, you might be doing some things but if you stay on the same page for more than 25 minutes, the system thinks that you're idle. You will receive a message that you're going to be logged out automatically in a few minutes. If you are automatically kicked out, all you need to do is log in again using the same identified username and password that you received in the email. This is the, the landing page for Keepers. So when you get into the system and you access Keepers, this is the page you see. Okay. You'll want to take your mouse and hover over where it says Home. When you do that, you get this drop down of assorted things to choose from. And you as a reviewer, need to select the program inventory. And you click on that. This is the view that you'll see. Across the top, it'll have the username and the name of the EPP across the top banner. Okay, that's pre-selected given the username that you use to access the information. When you click on the program category, a drop down box allows you to select the program area you have been assigned. Okay. This landing page for the program inventory view has tabs underneath the category. Okay. These tabs are the EPP IHE profile, clinical educator, courses, assessment, standards, responses, EPP attachments, and program attachments. The EPP profile provides information about the mission of the institution, the mission, the vision, the clinical partnerships, the quality assurance system, and some other optional information that just gives them 
an overview of the institution and the EPP. This is an information only piece. Okay? It's available should you want to take a look at it if you're not familiar with the institution whose program you are reviewing. Okay? In order to access the specific information, you would click on the response button to the right, and that would give you some specific context relating to uh, those components. The clinical educators, and this is just an FYI only, clinical educators is not something that our content reviewers are asked to review or respond to. Okay. But this tab just allows you to see the faculty associated with this program category, and it identifies the instructional faculty members, their qualifications or their experiences, and the courses that they can teach. There is a second faculty view, which is that, that second radio button that identifies the quality, uh, excuse me, the faculty who are qualified to teach courses in the program. The second view may have fewer faculty identified since they are the actual instructors of the courses. The next tab is the courses, and this identifies the courses appropriate for the program. Okay. It also provides the link to the syllabi, but in order to access that, you'll have to first select the program code. Okay. The program code will be included in the email that is sent to you with the username and password, and it identifies the specific program attributes that you're for the program that you're being asked to review. The majority of these programs will be initial teacher preparation programs. This courses table, besides providing the syllabi, identifies the credit hours associated with that course, the field hours, and please note the field hours are generally those pre-student teaching experiences and then the field days is any um, days, student teaching days that are required. The last two columns that you see on this page relating to diversity and technology, these are optional fields for our EPPs to respond to. So, but that might be a quick and easy step to look at as you're looking to answer those questions at the end, those yes, no questions uh, around diversity and technology. It may help identify which syllabi to go back and look at specifically. If there are more courses that are demonstrated in the display, then, then can be viewed in the display. Be sure to scroll down the page to see all the courses. When you see a blue link syllabus, you can click on that link to be able to see the syllabus associated. Depending upon which browser you are using, the steps to view and or download may be a little bit different. Just a general note, Chrome seems to be the best browser that works to access and open the documents. Syllabi for all professional education and methods courses should be available in the syllabi column. When you click on each of the syllabi to confirm alignment with the standards, elements, field and clinical practice and assessments. Syllabi are required to demonstrate alignment of the standards with either the course objectives 
sometimes called student learner outcomes, or the performance assessments. The courses table identifies the field hours, and these field hours ought to be demonstrated and evidenced in the syllabi. In addition to confirmation of these hours, the syllabi should provide evidence of the expectations for the field in clinical practice. The next tab is the assessment tab, and this displays all the assessments used for the specific program. I would like to clarify, there are courses assessments that are related to student performance, and then there are program assessments that the EPP uses to evaluate the effectiveness of their programs. Okay. This assessment tab is intended to capture those program evaluation assessments, some of which are tied to courses and capture the student performance data. This tab identifies the assessment name, the area that's being assessed, a description of that assessment, the reliability and validity of that assessment, and when that assessment occurs. Once you select this tab, it'll ask again to identify what is the specific program code, and you'll want to pick Pick the one that you're looking at for the assignment you've been given. The View Details button on the right gives specific information about each assessment. Okay. The information identifies which standards are being assessed, gives a space for the validity and reliability of the instrument if it's necessary, but specifics about which standards are aligned to the courses are in the standards tab. The next slide shows a picture of what, back up one please, Kathy, shows a picture of when you click on that view details, this is what you see. All right. So the standards is the next tab. And this demonstrates the alignment of the applicable standards to both the courses and the assessments. When you first open the standards tab, the course radio button, which is that first red arrow on the right that you see, demonstrates the alignment of the applicable standards to the course. Select the program code you were sent. If you've been assigned multiple codes, you'll need to do this step for each assigned program code. The standards may or may not be the same. Once the program code is selected, the table will automatically generate the standards and elements the EPP has aligned to the program courses. You may sort and filter as needed. To sort, you can grab the standard category language at the top of the column and drag it to the line above. So for example, if I want to sort out and see separately the National Science Teachers Association, I can select just those standards and the screen will filter out everything else except the courses that are aligned to that standard. If I want to look at the Kentucky Teacher stand, Performance Standards, I can 
either type in that line right below where it says standard standards category. I can type in the letter K and if they've aligned with the teacher standards, the system will pull the KTPS together. This table that you see can be sorted and filtered in a variety of ways. If you're not comfortable using this, the sort and filter features on the table, you can export to Excel in the majority of these different tabs. One of the ways a content reviewer can sort this information to determine which standards and elements have been aligned to the courses is by dragging and dropping the standard category or the description or the component description and it'll sort those in that order. So in the example you see they have been sorted by standard category and component description. So every course that addresses NSTA standard one would show up on the list, then the next one. This particular screen can be very long and would be easier to focus if you use some of the features to sort group and filter the data. By holding down the left mouse button on a column header, drag and release the column by moving it up to the blue line right above it and dropping it is how you will, will use the sort feature. This groups all the information with similar data within that header. You can also look at the standards through the assessment lens by clicking on the radio button that says assessments. Okay. Please note that EPPs are required to align their program assessments with the Kentucky teacher standards. If it is a teacher leader program, the assessments must be aligned with the teacher leader model standards. And if it's an ed admin program, the assessments have to be aligned to the PESOL standards. Counselor programs have to align to the Kentucky counselor programs. The majority of the programs assess the teacher standards. In the assessment view, the system automatically selects the group. And again, you can sort and filter by dragging and dropping into the blue line above, or you can export to Excel if you're more comfortable sorting and filtering by using Excel. If you want to see the standards in numerical order, all you have to do is click on the name of the particular column. So if you want to see the standards in order, you click on standards and it will arrange them chronologically in either ascending or descending order. The next section that provides some detail that you'll as content reviewers want to look at is the responses tab. This tab contains a series of questions that are appropriate for the defined program code. When you select the responses tab, you select again the identified program code and then select a section. All sections should include a response unless the question indicates that it is either optional or a duplicate question. Each section may contain a long narrative, so you'll need to scroll down through all the answers. Every time you change an, a selection option, 
the screen responses will change as well. The sections include questions relating to program experience, clinical experience, P12, and P12 experience, evidence and analysis, summary analysis, continuous improvement, and the quality assurance system. Content reviewers should focus on the responses provided in the program experience section, the clinical experiences section, and the P12 experiences. The next to last tab is the EPP attachments. This tab contains documents that apply to the EPP and may not be program specific. The EPP attachments may include sample partnership agreements, student handbooks, teacher education handbooks, general policies that apply to the majority, if not all, of the preparation programs. The attachment name may be random. Since it is the name of the file, the EPP uploaded. The document type, which is that second column, indicates the general purpose of the document. For example, the student handbook, a mentoring uh, plan, P12 curriculum evidence, etc. Yeah. And again, you can sort by doing the same thing by grabbing the name of the column and dragging and dropping it to the blue line above. The last tab contains documents that are program specific. And again, the name of the attachment may be random as the EPP names the file. The document type indicates the general purpose for this document. For example, curriculum guide, assessment rubric. You can click on any of the documents by clicking on the attachment name and downloading and opening a copy. Before proceeding to section three, are there any questions? Kathy, does anybody have anything in the chat? I don't see anything. I don't see anything in the chat. All of a sudden I have an echo. So are we pretty much good on that section you think Anybody? and no one has their hand raised so i'm assuming that everyone's okay a will a uh, cheat sheet be for, for this to be supplied um define the, what you mean by cheat sheet <laughs> go ahead and turn on your mic if you're more comfortable doing actually it. allison let me just take that for a second one of the things one of the resources that we will have for you is a reviewer's guide so we do have a recent updated keepers uh, guide that will walk you through so many of the screenshots that you saw in allison's section was taken exactly from 